Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. This is how I, you tweet me, this is where I live, and this is what we're talking about today. Self-documenting SQL. So what is self-documenting? Well, it's the theory that the quality of your code should be sufficiently high that understanding its purpose and its function should be apparent from the code itself. Quality code stands alone. No comments or documentation is really needed to accompany the code because all you need to know can be gleaned from the code itself. Or of course, self-documenting code can sometimes be our excuse for our own laziness. If we've got code we're not particularly proud of, we just call it self-documenting and we don't have to put any comments on it. That's one way of getting out of some work. In reality, I'd say the balance is probably somewhere in the middle. Your code should be able to be standalone in case the commentary is lost, but good commentary always helps, I find. I experienced the lack of commentary a while ago when I was working on a client site where we had a large c -sharp application that performed the correct function, but geez, it was terribly slow. Some analysis showed that most of the time was latency between the application tier and the database. Now that's a topic for a future video, but the SQL statements the c -sharp application was issuing all ran fine, but there were 10,000 such SQL statements being run. So the bouncing of calls back and forth between middle tier and database server was taking over a minute to finish. So I was asked to replicate the functionality of the c -sharp application in Peel SQL. Not to reduce the number of SQLs run or redesign the function entirely, just let all those calls run locally in the database, and then send the final results back to the c -sharp application just once. Even with 10,000 calls, Peel SQL would do that job pretty well. So with very little c -sharp experience, I opened up the source code and pretty much got lost very quickly. So I thought, well, there must be some comments here in the code to help me find my way. But there were no comments. That blew me away. In fact, I was so sure I must have missed the comments somehow, I went to Google to double check what a comment symbol was. But no, when I asked one of our c -sharp developers for some help, or more accurately, I said, why is there no comments? He said, oh, we never comment because c -sharp is self-documenting. Now, I admit my own ignorance in c -sharp played a part in not being able to pick up the function, but it struck me then that good quality code in any language should be self-documenting. And that got me thinking about my own SQL. I feel pretty confident writing SQL, and so sometimes the SQL statements I write are rather lengthy or perhaps their purpose is not immediately obvious. And as a coding language, SQL should be no different to any other. It should self-document. And one of the ways we can do that in SQL is with query block names. Let's have a look at an example to see how they're used. Here I have a query which brings together various pieces of information about employees and departments. The function of this query is not of particular importance, but you can see that the emp table is actually referenced three times. Now, I suppose we could consider this a somewhat complex query, so we might choose to run an explain plan on the query to get an idea of how the optimizer is going to process it. When we do that, we can see that there's some index range access on emp and an index full scan as well but it's apparent we've got a pretty obvious problem before we can even start to understand the plan. And that is, which emp in the query maps to which emp in the plan? The SQL itself and the plan do not reveal enough information. We need better documentation. We need the SQL to be self-documenting. So we recode the query now using query block names. I've color-coded the individual components. The main query reference is in red, the first inline query in purple, and the second in orange. If we fade out the code, we can see the syntax for the query block name. It's pretty simple, it's just a database hint, and you've got up to 24 characters for any meaningful name you want. It's not mandatory to use them. You can see I've added a query block name for the two inline queries, but I didn't do one for the outermost query, the one that contains our reference to the emp table. Now remember, the red emp was first, then the purple was second, and the orange was third. Now I take another look at the execution plan for our SQL containing the query block names. We've got that mapping information now right in front of us. You can see we've got the color coding there and the query block names down the right hand side. Notice a couple of other things. There's never a guarantee that the order in which you write your queries is the same order in which the optimizer is going to execute them. Notice how query block Q2 has jumped above query block Q1. It wasn't like that in the original SQL. And if you don't specify a query block name, Oracle automatically assigns one for you. You can see the cell dollar sign 4AD block, which represents the outermost query, the red emp that we never actually gave a query block to. Even at runtime, query blocks can be of assistance because they'll let you narrow your focus into which part of the SQL you need to work on for better performance. If I run the query with the gather plan statistics in, then when I subsequently use DBMS XPlan to see some runtime stats and I add the alias parameter, 
I get the runtime stats, but I also get the same query block mappings to help me associate query blocks with the execution statistics. Let's wrap up. As much as we try to keep things simple, our data requirements get more complex over time, and so our SQL statements are probably going to get more complex too. Just like all the other code in our application, we want to make sure that code is good quality and self-documenting. Query block names let you help the next person who has to maintain that SQL. And one reason that's probably very important is the next person is probably going to be you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all again soon.